What's going on, everyone? We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. And I'm Ed. And today on the top five, we shall be discussing our top five rivalries. Uh, two opposing forces going against each other makes for great drama. So uh, I'll go ahead and start off this time. Uh, my number five rivalry is from a more recent film. Uh, it's from last year, and it is in the film Warrior. Uh, I haven't seen this one yet. It's, it's a good film. I've uh, heard good things. Featuring Joel Edgerton and Tom Hardy as two brothers going uh, head-to-head as MMA fighters. Um, you have Joel Edgerton as the father who's down on his luck, needs some money. You have Tom Hardy who's kind of who's kind of, not kind of, he is this badass who uh, is a war hero trying to fight, um, you know, for his cause. And the entire film, they, they did this really exactly. awesome balance between their stories. Um, the entire setup is these two guys eventually clashing together um, in the main bout. And at the end, I f was really surprised at how well they were able to keep uh, our sympathies with both characters. You know, we wanted both of them to win and neither of them la, to la, lose. La, 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 la. Don't, uh, don't ruin it for me. La, I, la, la. I'll try not to ruin it. Uh, <laughs> but the way, the way they handled it was really well done. Um, probably the first MMA movie that I've seen that shows the fight scenes really, really well. Um, very good performances. Uh, the Nick long, Nolte. rich tradition of MMA movies. Exactly right. <laughs> Hopefully it starts a new tradition. So, um, and Nick Nolte does great supporting work as the dad. Uh, a very well-made movie. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, one of the better sports films that come out recently. Oh, I want to see it. Yeah. Bane getting buff. <laughs> well, <laughs> my number five will jump back to the 80s a bit and go to the best Star Trek movie, Star Trek Nos. Mm. The Wrath of Khan. And my rivalry is Kirk and Khan! Mainly I chose it just so I could do that. <laughs> um, but the Star Trek never had a better villain. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and that movie is essentially an extended submarine battle. Mm -hmm. Except for instead of submarines, they got spaceships. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you got... Uh, Ricardo Montalban with his big naked chest spitting, <laughs> quoting Moby Dick. Mm -hmm. You got uh, you got with Shatner shatting it out. It's <laughs> it's fantastic. Yes. The, the you know Kirk never had an equal quite like Khan. Right. I mean, when it comes to uh, Star Trek, I don't think there's any debate on which film is the best. And yeah, it's it, it's 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 sweet. I mean, there are other great ones. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying. That's, you know, you, you think bad guys in Star Trek, boom, Khan comes to mind. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to my number four. Uh, my number four is from another recent film, or relatively recent. Uh, it's from 2006, and it's the rivalry between Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale in Christopher Nolan's The Prestige. Good movie. Uh, this this rivalry between um, magicians Robert Angier and Alfred Borden is great because it's so dark and twisted. I mean, you have two guys who are both magicians. One is a great showman, but not a great magician. The other is a great magician, but not a great showman. They're opposite ends, uh, two sides of the same coin, and man, they really hate each other. They want to know how each other do, um, performs their tricks, and for the purpose of sabotaging them, like literally totally. going into the trick while they're performing it and sabotaging it in front of everybody. And it's all about obsession and taking it to the extreme. Um, these guys really don't care what happens to the other person as long as it makes their uh, career better. It's really a fantastic film. Really, like in all of Christopher Nolan's filmography, it's I'd say it's kind of underrated. Yeah, really. I think it deserves more attention. And um, I'd say the rivalry also taps into if you've ever been around magicians at all, there is that unspoken one-upsmanship that always seems mm -hmm. to go on in the in the magic community i mean even you know even though it's all illusions mm -hmm. yeah. yeah great it's a great great movie great drama it's it's awesome good pick oh. well my number four is also in the 2000s um it's for the lord of the rings trilogy i know there's a lot of rivalries in this one <clears throat> but the one that really stands out because it's the heart one of the hearts of the movie is between Gollum and and sam sam wise um, oh, okay. I, I mean, and the re reason is they're both fighting for essentially yeah. Frodo's soul. Right. Yeah. And I'm and you know, Sam, especially in that third movie, is really you know he's really the heart of, mm -hmm. you know, the heart of the picture. He, he's carrying Frodo up that last literally. that last mile. It's literally. And, and yeah. yeah, and but Gollum's the other one. He's the devil in Frodo's ear, mm -hmm. and the two of them are you know constantly, 
you know, M- Mr. Frodo, he's he's trying to steal the the the, the wafer bread, the communion wafer, whatever the hell that is, right. the elf bread. <laughs> um, and it, there, the the rivalry between those two is, I mean, it's there for long stretches of the of mm-hmm. the film. Yeah, and, it's uh, it's a bromance love triangle, as I like to, <laughs> to call it. Um, all, yeah, both uh, was it Sam and uh, Gollum uh, fighting for the affections <laughs> of Frodo. He once says it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> okay, let's move on to my number three. Uh, we're going to take it back a little bit <clears> with my <throat> number three rivalry. Um, Got to give a shout out to Brandy on this one because she mentioned it uh, a while back on another top five. And it is Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Uh, the rivalry between Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. Um, I decided to go with this one because the rivalry uh, between Baby Jane Hudson and Blanche Hudson uh, resembles a little bit of the rivalry that Betty Davis and Joan Crawford had in real life. They didn't like each other all that much. Um, In this movie, you have Betty Davis and Joan Crawford playing sisters. Uh, One of them was a star as a child. As she grew up, she kind of dimmed a little bit, while the other uh, sister kind of became a bigger star as she got older. And there was a lot of resentment there uh, going on. And And they serve up rats. Exactly. And the relationship (laughs) that they have is very twisted. Um, Joan Crawford playing the more thankless role as the victim of an accident that Betty Davis may or may not have been involved in. And pretty much the entire movie is seeing whether or not Joan Crawford can like escape her room and Betty Davis doing whatever she can to keep her there. It's, it's very weird. Mis- very Misery before misery. It is misery before misery. Um, but the performances are great between those two actresses. Um, and the entire movie, I was just riveted being like, oh my God, what is going to happen? Who's going to come out on top? It, you know, it's a very... Very strange, but very awesome <clears throat> movie. I'd give a little shout out also to the. There was a made for TV rem- remake with the the Redgrave sisters, Vanessa oh. and Lynn Redgrave. Okay. I mean, it's not as good. That's a cla- The movie you're talking about is a classic. I'm just saying that TV movie was was pretty good too. Definitely worth checking out. Though. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, good good choice. Well, my number three stretches many many films and actually got Oscar awards in that series of films. That's the Looney Tunes, and there are so many huh. rivalries in the Looney Tunes. But I picked. Bugs and Daffy. Oh. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Now, you could say, well, the ultimate is Bugs and Elmer. Right. I think that rivalry is a little one-sided in that <laughs> Bugs is... N- Elmer's never going to get him, right? <clears throat> you could say the same thing for uh, Wile E. Coyote and exactly. uh, Roadrunner. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But whereas Bugs digs into Daffy, and Daffy deserves it a little bit because he's a prick, right? <laughs> yeah. But even... But those two... I mean, if nothing else, duck season, rabbit season... Mm-hmm. The, the eternal debate over duck season versus rabbit season, one of the great you know comedy bits of all time, mm-hmm. and um, the two of them going at it for you know short after short after short is terrific, even down to that classic duck amuck, uh, the Chuck Jones cartoon oh, yeah, where the classic. where it's uh, just Daffy you know dealing with the animator and the animator turns out to be bugs. It's div- it's like. It's like a representation of their entire relationship. Like you have Daffy like wanting to become the star in Absolutely. the spotlight, and Bugs just overshadows him like all the time. It's Absolutely, like, never catch a break. Never catch a break. <laughs> all right, let's move on to my number two. Uh, my number two rivalry is from one of my favorite all-time crime films. Uh, it was from 1995. Written and directed by Mr. Michael Mann, and is the rivalry between Robert De Niro and Al Pacino in Heat. Uh, Gotta stay sharp. Once again, a rivalry that was built upon reality. You had Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, two great actors that played a lot of the same kind of roles. Uh, They were in Godfather 2 together, but they never shared a scene. Um, This time, you have Al Pacino and Robert De Niro going head to head, you know, facing off. Uh, Robert De Niro as Neil McCauley, the expert uh, criminal thief. And you have Al Pacino as the sort of loose cannon on the edge, uh, Lieutenant Vincent Hanna. just really great seeing these two guys kind of try to outsmart each other, you know. Uh, Al Pacino trying to catch Robert De Niro and Robert De Niro escaping uh, at, you know, the last <clears throat> moment. And then there is that classic scene where the two finally meet up and have that coffee coffee yep. shop scene. You would think that, like, a rivalry between Al Pacino and Robert De Niro would be, like, over the top and violent. but It's controlled. It's controlled. It's subtle. And it's <clears> just <throat> two guys sharing coffee, having a discussion, and it is so superb in both the writing and the acting. I love that scene, and I love that movie. You also get most bullets fired in a scene, I'm guessing. One of the greatest shootouts ever. And Val Absolutely. Kilmer in a mullet saying brother all the time. <laughs> anyway, great pick. Great yes. pick. 
My number two, um, going for uh, one of the all-time classic thrillers, Quint and the Shark. Captain uh, Quint and the Shark in Jaws. Yeah. Which is, let's face it, it is a, a thinly veiled Moby Dick reference mm -hmm. of Captain Ahab versus the whale. Yeah. But as great as Jaws is, and all three of those main characters are terrific, Robert Shaw's as Captain Quint is, it, I, I, I feel, makes that movie. Mm -hmm. And he uh you know it, it he takes it far beyond obsession you know he's he does he sabotages their trip out on the boat right just cuz he's going to he's going to land his damn fish absolutely yeah um and he's driven the um he he's insane <laughs> he he, he drives he drives yeah. to insanity by by yeah. the end yeah um they they i mean R richard Dreyfuss's character is even you know several times is doing the what the hell is with this guy? Mm -hmm. You know, but that's one of the reasons that movie is so great is the characters are so rich, and he is the richest. It's yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, I there's really nothing I need to add. It's great rivalry, great man versus nature movie. Also, yep. I mean, Jaws is like the answer to like any cinematic question, yes. pretty much. So, all right, let's move on to my number one. Uh, my number one pick was a film that immediately came to mind when we started uh, compiling this list. Uh, it's from a musical, 1961, and it is the Jets and the Sharks in West Side Story. Good one. I mean, I didn't mention West Side Story as one of my top five musicals when we talked about it, but I, I love this one. film. I, I love West Side Story. You have the Jets, you know, these Caucasian American guys versus the Sharks, who are these immigrants from Puerto Rico. And just that dynamic, um, it pushes the film further than just being a musical. It's about... It's about race. Urban life, about racism, uh, about acceptance. Uh, the story is definitely a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, um, done very, very well. In fact, I would say this is one of the better adaptations of Romeo and Juliet. Um, mm -hmm. The dancing, uh, that opening scene where the two face off against each other, completely silent, no dialogue, but it is awesome. Absolutely, that, that whistle. Once you hear that whistle, you know it's on, and I mean... It's such. It's so great that I don't even have the words to describe how much I enjoy it. So you can, I, no argument for me. Great movie. Yeah. Well, my number one is, and I boy, you know what? Take your pick on the on the movie you're gonna pick, but Batman and the Joker. You want to talk uh, about rivalries? Yeah. Those guys. I mean, whether it's you know, go back to Adam West and uh, freaking Cesar Romero mm -hmm. if you want to. Even Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson, the great, <clears throat> you know, uh, Christian Bale and. Um, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. I'm getting stuck on it. Um, and even the animated, you know, the the Kevin Conroy and Mark, Mark Hamill mm -hmm. version, which does count as a movie because there was a movie. There was a movie. Um, it, the, it doesn't get any better than that, you know. If you have the Batman, you have the Joker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's a rivalry that extends further than movies. I mean, absolutely, it's, it's a pop culture thing, and it's 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 great. It's man, I I wish I should I wish I picked that. Well, to be honest, well, that's why I'm here. Yes, we're, we're here exactly. to get each other's backs. Yes, great balance. Um, yeah, I mean, Batman, his rogues gallery is almost unarguably one of the best rogues gallery absolutely. in all and of comics. The Joker's at the at, and at the top. The Joker is on the top. So. All right, so that does it for our top five rivalries. Um, if there's any that you would like to mention, please let it be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we will see you guys next time. Later.